Hello there, everyone. Everyone, it's time for another deep away run. Still, at the moment, currently super addicted to playing through Underrail again with a plethora of different characters, but slowly losing the addiction. This might be the last one of these I do until sometime in the summer when I get re-addicted to this game again. In any case, we're using a character that I had used before with some slight alterations. And I want to see if he can get through Depot A on hard. Today, Garrett is going to be making the attempt. The Thief from the Thief series. And we beat the game with him back in 2019. <laughs> Some four years ago, if you can believe it, is when I first played the game with my very first character, this character. He's been built slightly differently because it is hard mode. But generally, he's the same. So let's put a break here, and then we'll do the standard stuff of covering his statistics, skills, feats, and equipment. Alright guys, we're going to very quickly cover these stats, skills, and feats today, as opposed to rambling on for like 30 minutes about them. We've played this character before, back in 2019. And my intention is to level him very similarly, but not quite the same, as we are playing this on hard, not normal. So it requires slightly more optimization in his build, but we can still get away with a few things that aren't quite optimized. Garrett is a hybrid character, and will be using crossbows and melee as he goes forward, leveling both and not taking versatility. There are feats in the crossbows and melee skill trees that I want him to have, and they require some skill point investment to take them. By the time I was able to benefit from versatility, easily half of his leveling would have been put into both of these different offensive skills to take those feats that I want. So there's no versatility in his future. This makes his stat spread a bit difficult, because crossbows want you to take a high perception, but melee wants you to take a high strength or dex, and crossbows and melee don't have anything that overlap very easily with each other. In any case, for Garrett, his strength was lowered by 1 because he wasn't very strong, his dexterity was increased to 9 as he was a very dexterous individual, and this would benefit his subterfuge skills which he took. He was rather agile, and so we got a 8 agility at the moment. 4 constitution, because he would fall over if anything hit him <laughs> 2 or 3 times in the Thief series. He didn't have a good amount, uh, good health bar in that game, so I thought it was appropriate to lower at 1 point here. Procession of 7 to help him hit things with his crossbow, though he really wants it to be higher than that. I have not made up my mind if it's going to be left alone at 8, 9, or 10 at the moment, but it will at least get one more point in it at level 12. A 4 in will because he wasn't very wise, and a 6 in intelligence because he was rather, well, clever, we shall say, and he was able to remember like a map, and understand how much certain things were worth. He had a good sense of appraisal for loot he would be picking up. So that explains his stats. As for his skills, as you've seen, he has crossbows and melee. We're leveling both of these. Throwing, he threw flashbangs and gas grenades in the original Thief series, and we'll be throwing more than that in this game. Sometimes I just need a grenade to land kinda in the general vicinity of where I'm tossing it. And so, some additional points in throwing besides none is helpful in that regard. We're leveling dodge and evasion. Uh, whenever it comes to dodge and evasion characters, I tend to put more points in evasion than dodge, with the assumption that I will be able to stay out of trouble, which is to say keep melee away from me, rather than rely on my dodge to avoid melee. Start a few skills because we're playing Garrett, Master Thief from the Thief series. He was a stealthy character, and so we got points in stealth, lockpicking, and pickpocketing, all of which he did. We put down traps in Thief as well, mines in particular, if I recall correctly, but we'll be using bear traps with this Garrett as well. No hacking for him though, he wasn't very good at getting into mechanical 
systems in Metal Age, so I felt it would be appropriate not to give him any hacking gear either. For his feats, Expertise is one of the few feats that plays nicely with crossbows and with melee attacks. So, we're definitely taking that. Marksman? Because I tend to only use special bolts with my crossbow wielders, and don't fire normal bolts with, the, with a few exceptions. It also turns out that this is a very nice feat to give to a hybrid character using... Uh, who doesn't have a high perception for crossbows, because the specialization of this adds 1% to your chance to hit with crossbows, which will pull a lot of work for Garrett, since that perception might not be leveled as high as his other stats. Nimble, we're a stealthy character, we don't want any armor penalty. Interloper, I'm a stealthy character, but I want to move around a little faster while in stealth. This is always helpful for that. Escape Artist, I didn't take this with Garrett back in 2019, but now having played through the DLC several times, if I'm playing a dodge and evading character there, I view this as a requirement because of spiders. Taking it here for before deep away is also very useful, just in case we end up with an acidic entanglement on me. This will let me spot potentially survive the following round. Ambush is new for Garrett. We didn't take this with the version of him we played back in 2019. I'm having a lot of fun with this, though I don't quite understand the rules as much as I should. It feels like sometimes I should qualify for the ambush shot, but don't. I am very grateful, though, for the inclusion of the notification of when you will benefit from ambush. I just feel like I should be benefiting from it a little bit more than I am. Any case, this plays nicely with setting things on fire if you're in the darkness, because suddenly they count as being illuminated, which means you have a great chance to crit them with the second crossbow bolt. And cheap shots, which is a totally accurate thing for Garrett to take. For his equipment, nothing really fancy in the terms of headgear, a simple bakava for the extra stealth. This shield emitter was acquired out of the corpse in the burrower held area within the GMS compound. A decent galvanic overcoat that used to belong to the Ironhead Commando to the south of Southgate Station, who was there on hard and not on normal difficulty. I really wanted this, since I knew there was going to be a stealth bonus to it, and yes, this was a very nice one to get. Though I suppose the mechanical resistance could be higher, this will still greatly reduce the damage that we take from bullets, though it won't save us from the auto turrets in Depot A. The Lunatic Electrician, who is near the GMS compound, dropped this level 14 monsoon crossbow. Very glad to see this in particular. Unfortunately, it wasn't scoped, which I really wanted, the extra hit chance with crossbows with Garrett. But since the monsoon has extra precision, this was, this was a nice thing, I think, for Garrett to find. Plucked this Tongues and Steel dagger off the belt of the fairy master over in Southgate Station. She always has a high level dagger and we can get it just before Deep OA. I did complete Colmere's quest but I turned in the dagger to him hoping that I could potentially reach level 11 before Deep OA after doing that but I still didn't quite get the experience I needed. I still think this is a great dagger to use even though we lose 5% critical hit chance. Found Tabby Boots! This is very nice, since most of the time I don't get tabby boots before Depot A, or during Depot A for that matter. I won't say no to more dodge and evasion. The decreased action point cost for swinging my dagger is nice, as is the increased movement point. So this is basically the worst tabby boots we could have gotten. Also, one of the Black Eels members, just in the room to the east of here, had a level 8 Tongues and Steel Dagger with her, so just in case I need to do electrical damage, we have the option to do so. I don't think you guys care very much about the items on my belt, but just in case I, uh, yeah, we'll just skip those, and I think that's good for the summary. Okay guys, with all that covered, let's go ahead and start Depot A.
Before we do this, though, a little more, really quick. I did walk into this area to leave some supplies here that I'll be wanting to use as we go through this area together. In particular, I did get some mutated dog leather armor. So we'll be swapping to this when we're in the acid held areas. Mutants and acid dogs in them. Okay. Well, let's get started. This should should be a little easier than it normally is. <clears throat> in so much that I have stealth this time around. Something I haven't had for my runs on hard mode yet. Oh, by the way, just most of you probably who have played this game know this already, but I did not. Notice that odd symbol to the left of these people's names when I hold down the tab key. That's indicating that I will benefit from ambush if I take the shot here. You have to be in darkness and they have to be illuminated for you to use it. I also forgot to mention, oh, but I'm not wearing it on my forehead. I've got some detection goggles. I should go and fetch them out of this right now. Not the best, but I won't say no to an extra 42% detection on someone who only has a 7 perception and not no paranoia. And I want to see, yep, I want to see all the traps in this little area. Before I go any further. I'm actually going to want these traps as well. All of them. Even the MK1 frag mines. Garrett's playing classic mode, which means I also gain a, a benefit from disarming every trap, even if I don't take it or reclaim it. So we're going to do that for all of those traps. Okay, so... Do I have caltrops on me? Oh, I shouldn't need caltrops for this first fight. But I will take off the goggles. I know how much you guys like watching me search for treasure during <laughs> during these games, so we'll do that as well. Oh, someone locked up a perfectly good cave hopper steak. I'm sure that's not impossible to chew. We could also benefit from more agility, so we'll at very gladly take that. Okay, so how do we want to set this up? I'm bringing 14 Burr Poison Bear traps, 3 at MK2 fra uh, Frag Mines, and 2 HE Mines. I don't think this matters, but I'm going to also equip my Jackknife as I deploy these things. This is a bit dangerous if I put it here. I'm trying to gauge or guess what enemies will go before others and where they will reach. I don't like making walls of traps. I want to be very selective and specific with where I put them. I think this will probably be good. If I... Well, you know what we could do? Let's see. This is going to be so risky, but I'm going to try this. Can I reclaim this frag mine? I don't know what the... I've never tried to take a mine in Depot A on hard yet. So I'm going to... I'm praying I've got the skill to take this. We do. Okay, good. Let's now use that mine 
in this room. When the enemies, assuming the enemies do bunch up, I can then throw a grenade on top of that and detonate it. Did I bring any single-use grenades with me? I not. That's an MK3 frag. That's reserved for when I fight the mutants. We don't want that one. I guess we'll. We can always use one of these, I suppose. Oh, didn't want to take those with me. Okay. That should be good. Let's make sure we don't use this. <sighs> okay. Let's quick save. Let's start. All right, so. Sure. We'll use a serrated bolt to start. Good crit. The bleeding will kill it in one round, so we don't have to shoot him again. We'll start running away now. We're going to get all of their attention. Every single enemy. And we'll activate our shield. And by all of their attention, I mean every single mutant in the area. The dogs are coming as well. That dog should hit the trap. It's not a good chance to hit any longer, as we're far away. But we'll take one sh- oh. If I shoot him. Yeah, we have the movement to, movement to get in there. That'll be fine. Right, we missed. Let's now end the turn. A dog missed a trap and hit our mine. A different dog hit that trap. Whenever I incapacitate a target via cheap shots, I stop to think if it's worth continuing to hit them. We don't have cutthroat, so... We would have to circle around behind it and slit its throat if you want to do that. But we don't have it, and I'm not sure I'm taking that feat. Oh, uh, I'm getting distracted. Why do I stop when I incapacitate a target with cheap shots? If it's the only target left, and a single hit might not kill it, then it's probably worth not attacking it again, and waiting out the round to recover all our action points, so we get a whole other round of stabbing it to death next round. In this instance... We're not going to kill that Junkyard Muty with another hit. Unless I crit. And even then, it'll have to be an amazing crit to kill it with one hit. I don't really want to stay out here because I don't want to be fired upon by anyone else. I think there's one more dog out here. I think there's three dogs. I think we'll deactivate our shield and start moving away. Oh. But I am hoping that that dog wasn't, like, right here. Actually, the dog couldn't get around the incapacitated target. I don't think we have to worry about the dog running into this mine and killing me. Or anyone else, for that matter. Okay, let's... Sh uh, I want to leave the door open. Uh, 
If I leave the door open, then I'm not going to be... Hmm. The enemy's going to run into this room this turn, and the one with the dagger will probably step on the mine. And I'm guessing that the one with the dagger is going to go first for any other, so that's going to waste the mine to kill a single target. Maybe we should shut the door. We can open it and throw a Molotov. We'll do that then. It was a dog that ran over that. Alright, it was the only target, which also is super awkward. We can kill her. I'm going to throw a flare down here. Shut the door and move away. Take out our crossbow. Well, he's not illuminated... And neither is his friend. Let's move up and start stabbing him. That was very lucky. All those were 84% chances to hit. I don't think he can reach me. He doesn't have sprint. I'll move here and we'll activate our shield just in case he can. He cannot. Good. Incapacitated him. Let's move over here and shut the door. And then move around here. I'll wake up just in time to see his friend get slaughtered. He's now in ambush range. But I don't have the action points to unfortunately shoot him. He's also almost dead. And that's it. All right, that'll be all the enemies in this room. Now we just loot, well, all the corpses, but uh, we're gonna put that away. That's garbage. This is the first time in a long time I've had a character do deep away who wasn't a crafter either. So it's odd for me to just leave so much garbage lying around and not convert it to spare parts. Did every single trap we set get set off? I think it did. It did. All right. Not bad. I like when I successfully guess where the enemy is going to walk and place traps in the appropriate places. Everything that these guys have is just garbage. All right. So let's leave you there. Well, except the bullets, I guess. Okay, we're going to want to pluck all the other traps off the ground. So let's get on our jackknife. No biology is in Garrett's future. So it's pointless for us to take any... Any creature bits... Or the components that creature bits be, uh, get turned into when you break them down. Extract humor. And process plant. We don't need any of that. And it's... I tend to view them as not... They're not really worth taking to sell. You get so little money for it. If we were desperate, we could take it. Arguably on dominating. You get, you get even less, but it's even more important to sell. I, I'm guessing everything you find... But we shouldn't need to do that here. Okay, let's... Well, well, I still have some stuffed bat in effect. Why don't we... Reveal these traps. We know there's one more. Okay. Those are those four. There is a trap here, but I'm not going to be able to get to it without being fired upon by the sentry turrets. Auto turrets, you might remember, automatically detect you if you have stealth. So, we I don't want to risk that.
let's spend some time and we'll grab this frag mine. So I guess we'll, we'll grab all the mines from here. Assuming I've got what it takes to do so successfully. In case you guys have forgotten what my trap skill is. 71 effective. I'll be curious if I can grab the MK2 frag mine here. Covered a standard HE mine. Oh, okay. We got we have what it takes to get that one. That's very promising. It means we are likely to have what it takes to get all the mines in Depot A. I think there's MK3 in here though. I'm not quite sure if we're prepared for those. Okay, we've searched this area entirely. I like walking around in stealth, if I have a stealth character, by the way. That's even going to be even more annoying for you guys to watch. I do apologize. But I, I have to do it. Alright, let's head down here next. I have stealth today. So weird. <laughs> it's so weird to have a stealth character. Gabriel, who we played through the game with, didn't have stealth. Neither did Decker. And most of the characters I play these days don't have stealth. It's so weird, too, now that I think about that. Because... After I played through the game with Garrett, I couldn't imagine not having stealth. So, one more swing might kill him, but it might not. So I'm going to go ahead and just end our turn, which recovers all of my action points. He recovers, but we can swing at him another, like, six or seven times. And he had just junk on him. Old habits die hard, so I still take everything off the corpses. And put all the stuff I get into the containers nearby. Right! We got lockpick on Garrett, so I could just avoid the auto turrets and climb around inside the vents. But I seem to remember with, I think, Alien, who was a classic character, that the vents, uh, that the auto turrets are worth 630 experience points. Which is, I mean, if we kill all five that are down here, that's 3,000 experience points. That's simply too much experience points to leave it on the table. So we're going to try to destroy them. Now, I think we're going to see how painful this will be, both figuratively and literally, by coming down here first. And I know there's a trap down here. Oh, oh, that was the wrong one. <laughs> Good thing I didn't walk down there. We would ha It would have been awkward. Might have lived, but probably wouldn't have. Still not the right place to be. Okay. I want to get into the room on the other side of that. Okay, so we got to go out this way then. Okay, good. That worked out. I've discovered something recently in the game when it comes to initiative. Something that I suspected was the case, but only saw it recently. When you enter... When combat... Hmm. 
when you enter a room or leave a vent and an enemy sees you do it and starts combat immediately, I did not realize, though I suspected it was the case, that you are penalized for this happening. You are, you suffer 10, uh, you lose 10 initiative off your initial roll. That's an MK2. No, that's an MK3 HE mine. I don't know if I can take that, but we're going to give it a try. Let's watch Garrett die. I think we'll disarm it, even if we can't take it. But it's going to be tricky. Oh, it, it is MK2, and we could take it. Okay. All right, let's get ready for the first auto turret fight. Well, that's not promising. <laughs> This is gonna take a while. I did not bring the bolts for this. The good news is, this turret, at least, is in... We're not in any real danger from it. The bad news is, I have no way to put a significant amount of damage on this. And I feel like we should watch me do one of these on screen. So we'll destroy this particular turret. Okay. Crits are good when we crit. What's our crit chance on Garrett? 13%. I don't have any goggles that increase my crit chance. Just didn't get lucky enough to find any. Actually, that's not true. I did find some, though they were like 4%. Still, those would have been handy here. I did not bring enough bolts. Absolutely did not bring enough bolts for this. So, I'm going to have to go back and buy more bolts at some point. I want to see how much experience points I, I earn. If if I do earn like 630, we, we got to do this. This time around, I'm not intending Garrett to have exposed weakness. This will be one of the first melee characters I've ever used who's not going to take exposed weakness as a feat. It could have been handy here. I could have moved up, exposed weakness, fired once, and then moved away, and then got two more shots off at it when it while it's at minus 50% of its mechanical damage threshold. Maybe I should actually try to fit it into his build after all, after witnessing the horror that is dealing with these turrets without it. And one crit so far. Yeah, one crit. Usually the last attack on a creature is a crit, when it, especially when it only has one hit point left. Let's see if the game does that to me at this moment. Nope. Okay, well, we did destroy it. It only took forever. Oh, I'm down just to these amount of bolts now. I walked in here with, with, I think, 40. Now I'm down to 29. Okay. That also... Oh, how much experience points did I get? 630 experience points. We gotta kill every single turret. That's just too good. That's just too good. It was it was so good that I remembered how much it was when I had done did this with Alien. It's we can't pass on that much of experience. Not when it's about a third of a, of a level if we kill all five of them. So we're we're doing it. Uh 
Okay. Good. There's that one. I have to be a little careful because I don't think the dogs... I don't think the dogs know the mines are here. I think they'll walk on and set them off. Actually, that can't be the case. They would have walked on some of the other ones by now. Okay, let's deal with the dog that's out here. Doggy. Oop. Can't leave the remains there. Don't want to accidentally click on it. Hmm. I'd forgotten how much experience points you earn from disarming traps and picking locks in the game. Since it's been a while since I had characters who had done so. We don't have the key card for that, so we're not going to interact with that yet. Okay, so I want to deal with all of the dogs now in this hallway. I think there's two left. Oh, we learned there was nothing in the lockers that are over here last time we did this, right? But we should still investigate just to... Just to see how bad it actually is. Uh, and by that, I mean... Last time we got unlucky and there was absolutely not... Like, garbage. Trash in those lockers. Was that just an unlucky roll? Nope. <laughs> this time they're completely empty. Okay. While there are more mines scattered around out here, I think it's time for us to deal with the dogs. My food expired, so let's have... Mushroom salad. Oh, that's awkward. I know that there's more traps around. Okay, there it is. I think that's the only other one. But if a dog runs onto that one... Oh crap, okay. I did activate combat before it saw me. It's not in, It's we don't get ambush. Let's see, did it see me? It did not see me. I should probably be stealth for this. The moment it moves towards us, if it does, we can take a shot. I guess we, still not considered in the light, even though I feel like it, sh it should be. Stab it in the butt. Looks like there was another mine. I think there's another dog in the hallways. I think there's three, but I might be confusing the fact that I usually fight all the dogs at the same time. Nope, there is a third. Okay. I, I usually get confused because other dogs end up aggroing and onto the fight due to doors opening and the mutants investigating what's making noise. Yeah, 
even though I've seen that it's very lucrative to do the Black Eels quest, especially on hard mode, I have not yet done so with Garrett. I'm tempted to try something I've never tried before or seen anyone else try, which is start the Black Eels quest, but then tell the scrappers what's happening without sealing the door. Because normally I just complete the scrappers quest. They detonate this area and you can't get the Black Eels quest. What if I start the Black Eels quest and then tell the Scrappers the Black Eels are planning on making a move. Do the Scrappers decide to move against the Black Eels, I wonder? I'll have to try that after we're done with Depot A. Okay, so... This will lead to the robot held area, which we'll do next. But first, let's grab all the mines we see. I'm assuming that we need our jackknife. Actually, we could test it on a mine. Uh, but these are MK2s. I kind of really want these ones in particular. So the plan will be to open this, uh, put a mine down here, another one near the door after we open it, and then shoot this barrel, which should make enough noise that the mutants come to investigate and set off the mines. Oh, but you know what? When these mines detonate, the other group of mutants may decide to investigate as well. Why don't we trap the whole area in case that ends up being the case? We'll also open this door then as well to make sure that the sound carries. I've used sound with Garrett in his adventure two or three times now to make sure that different organizations fight each other. And well, mostly animals. But it's been really handy to see that it. to have enemies kill each other. So I don't have to get my hands dirty. Okay, so... We're going to do not the quite the door trick. But I know there's a, there's a dog in that room, and I don't want it just walking out immediately and into me. So we're going to do that to make sure I can get away. We'll set a trap here. Actually, if I'm going to detonate that, the trap should be... Hello, dog. The trap should be here. We'll put another trap... Uh, I guess we could put actually some a single burrow trap down. We shouldn't need a second, but I'll put one down on this side in case someone tries to flank us. Okay, now, to get their attention, let's let my stealth come off cooldown before we take a shot at the explosive barrel together.
That's annoying. I don't quite know what happened. But I want them to know I'm here. Okay, they walked on one of my minds at the very least. Neither are considered to be within, uh, to be, to qualify for ambush. I don't really like my hit chances on either of them. There we go. Now we can ambush them. The dog's more important to kill than the muti. That muti has just a dagger. So I'm not too concerned about it. But we'll run up here anyway. Oh, another dog. All right. They're avoiding the trap, so I guess they see it. Let's move back and throw a Molotov. Oh, nope, it ran right into the trap. They just got lucky it didn't trigger it. Oh, wow. Good hit. Very good hit. Unfortunately, you are really lit up. All of them see me. This is the perfect opportunity for me to use a fire shot at this one, which should also strike both of these others on the way. There's no reason not to level. Oh, crap, but I actually need my build in front of me, given how tricky this has been. So give me one second. See, I can just bring it up here. And load Garrett at level 12. Okay. Five points in all the things that are currently max in level. So that's easy to do. Level 11 is always a boring one to record on screen. I am so sorry, because we don't have to choose a... Uh, we don't get a feat. You get to see me agonize over. It's such a waste, only six points, but I want points into some of my technology skills every single level, and this is encouraging me to keep at it. Oh, Tim, that's level 12 you see there, so hold on a second, let's see. Oh, is there one second? Okay, we're not putting any points into throwing. Even at level 12. Okay, so then... I guess traps? Sure. We'll just put... We'll put the rest in traps. It can't hurt to have more in it. It'll help us find other traps around here. In case they were slightly beyond my detection capabilities. And it makes my traps even harder to find. Oh, I wanted more points in dodge though too. But I can do that next level. No. No, we put some in, We put some here too. Okay, that's what I want by level 12. And this will be more useful to me now than later. For against the mutants. I don't think there's any lockpicking or pickpocketing 80. There's definitely no pickpocketing in here. And our jackknife will allow us to get lockpick 80 in this area anyway. As would some of the MK2 lockpicks I possess. Let's go with this. Two 
two, uh, three rounds that he's dead. Is that right? No, two rounds and he's dead. Let's see if he decides to chase after me. He did not. He's dead. <laughs> That's another good thing about classic mode compared to oddity mode. Oh, hello, you two. This is another good opportunity for me to use a flame shot, because it will strike both of them. No reason not to use the shield. Oh, that's a jackrabbit. I'm not scared of a jackrabbit. Something I've, I've mentioned that I really like about Underrail is that you can tell what type of weapons are being fired at you, what caliber they're using, based on the sound that hap uh, that occurs when the gun is fired. So, and that was a silenced SMG, which means that it has to be a jackrabbit. Oh, nope, or a jaguar, or I'm wrong. Uh, but 5mm uh, is what I meant, sorry. 5mm weapons can be silenced. No other type of cal... Uh, no other caliber bullet can be for the weapons that, that would fire them. And 5mm doesn't do significant damage. My armor should have protected me from that damage. So when I know I'm being fired upon by only that type of pistol, for example, or an SMG, I'll power off the shield with the expectation that my armor will just absorb the hit. Which is usually the case. Now, what did we get here from them? Oh, we got supplies to make up for what we used, actually, which is interesting. But then we get all this garbage. Actually, that hammer is worth holding on to. None of the melee weapons are, though. We'll hold on to those. And I think that was potentially both groups of enemies that we just killed there, too. Which is great. That's another room then cleared. But let's double check while in stealth. Oh, nice. Our mines killed these two. is safe from Garrett. Dog Chu Choi. I guess they give you that there in case you forgot to get it from from the well maybe you didn't decide to even fight him. There's a gentleman guarding one of the power stations. That's part of your first quest for Southgate Station. And there's a chew toy there worth two Adi experience points. But you can only study it once. I do... I, I do like that the game gives you other chances to find most of the Adi items in the game. Or have an alternate way... Like, there's more than than you need. Let, let me phrase that correctly. More than than you need? Yeah, that's correct. So there, there's two dog chew toys, even though you can only benefit from studying it once on the off chance that you miss one of them. And most of the Adi items that you can find, which are revealed via Sutterfuge, can be acquired via other means. Although some of them, I'm still not sure how you do it without aggroing an entire organization. The th oh, pig hound, a uh, pig tabby boots. I think I prefer these over the rat hound ones. Let's see, same movement speed. Same dodge and evasion. Same action point cost reduction. But we also pick up a point of constitution. Yeah, absolutely. Better and better all around for us. Wow. 
The game's been rather both kind and not kind to Garrett. Most of the loot I've gotten has, uh, in terms of what I can sell back to merchants, let's, uh, or sorry, sell worthy items, has not been very good. But the equipment Garrett uses has been very good. Most of the crossbows were garbage, but this particular crossbow was amazing to find this early in the game. Most of the daggers were not good, but this one was, as was the electro one we found. Same thing with the armor, for example, so I guess I, I guess I shouldn't be complaining as much, but it's been kind of a struggle to keep cash on Garrett. This is perhaps the lowest amount of coins I've had on a character so far in the game. Oh, I'm going to... I want to be lazy. It's surprisingly expensive in hard mode to play non-psychers who aren't melee focused. Even psychers who are... Uh, who, like, uh, Boots has been somewhat tricky early on, too. Even late, later on, it's been a bit tricky for him for cash. If I want to, say, fully outfit the player housing. Because money... Money goes into... Ammo. And drugs. Quite easily. And consumes quite a bit of it, too. Okay, so we've got three auto turrets in the next area that I want to do. And we do not have the bolts to do that battle. So we've got to leave deep away to grab them. It's a bit awkward when I do this. But I didn't... I wasn't sure how much damage we would do to the auto turrets. Yeah, there's six total. Three in the next room that we're going to do under Deep OA. One in the room we just completed. And another two in the acid area that I go to right after the next room. To, in order to uh, unlock other passages. I guess you guys will get to see me do a little bit of shopping. So, Kendrick, what do you have? I don't need any of that. I need more normal bolts. We need all 60. It's gonna, I, we're going to consume every bolt we've got. Dealing with the boe. Well, at least all the standard bolts. I think I brought enough grenades to help me here too. And we'll be throwing all our EMPs in this next area. I guess I could buy, if he's selling any, H-E Mark II grenades. Just to make this a little quicker for us. I could also just cut it, the part, but we'll talk about some random stuff. I am recording far more under rail than I intended to do this year. It was a- that was a really big mistake to try watching some Underreal videos on YouTube, because all it did was put me in the mood to play the game. <laughs> I was anticipating it- uh, watching it to get the urge out of me, but no, that did not happen at all. Not at all. Okay, let's see. So let's do this. Okay. Right, we have to deal with robots in addition. Or, yeah, that's right. Bots. You gotta deal with bots in addition to dealing with the turrets. So we we might have to leave again to pick up more bolts. We'll see. Oh. Oh, I don't want to do it. 
We've got the crawler. Also. I I was blissfully unaware the crawler was there whenever I've done any of my Depot A runs in the past. Now that I know it's here in Depot A, and since I tend to view Depot A as a test of my ability to kill every single thing in Depot A, I'm guessing we should kill the crawler too. Oh man, I don't really want to do that. I don't have any nets on me. We don't have a taser. I have no flashbangs currently equipped. We'll think about the crawler. Actually, we should stealth, Tim. We're going to kill that anyway. Okay, so we will start with the shock bolt. good. Grab all the key cards, search all the lockers. Oh, well, well, the game just gave you a net. That's it telling you, you kind of have to do it. Oh, we can ambush bots. Okay, we're going to do that then. And this bot comes around again. I... Uh, I guess we'll try the crawler. Man, I'm not looking forward to this. At least it's not a death stalker on hard. <sighs> okay, we're going to wait here for that bot to show back up. Then we'll just blast it. I do notice that my food is expiring, so we'll eat something else. We'll probably go with some agility now. Okay, here we go. Okay, gotcha. If I can get all the bots that way, that'd be really nice. No, I bet that Ambush plays nicely with ele Elemental Bolts. Because when you crit with an uh, with the Elemental Bolt, you're going to do incredible damage with it. Hmm. Alright, well, let's deal with the Crawler next. I don't know if I got the DPS to take out the Crawler. Got to prep specifically for this enemy, so... Oh, that, hold on, but that enemy's not over here. It was accessible in the other vent system from where we just came. Never mind. We'll wrap, out, we'll wrap up this area first, then. Oh! You're wondering where I've been in Underrail already, perhaps. Every room was cleared out, with the exception of some that I usually avoid. That would be... The Burrers near Junkyard, in the ruin held there, by the gentleman who's dying from poison. I didn't go there. And I also did not investigate... The group of lurkers that you have to come up to reach from the underrail passageways. I don't like doing that area because I don't have a way to zone until after I get dynamite. If I want to walk in via a different way. It was tempting 
to try for it anyway. Because in one of the rooms nearby, there's a lurker assassin. Which means that there's the potential for an amazing dagger and or another suit of stealth armor there. But I decided against it in the end. I'd have to sneak past the lunatics if it wasn't going to kill them. And I don't think I could kill them without zoning and then re-entering the area from a different direction. In hard mode, most of my characters will die to a lunatic if they get line of sight on the character and are able to attack them. I'm gonna hope this little area here is considered an ambush area. It is not. Okay, that's a shame. So let's light up the bot. Still not considered to be ambush, okay? I don't know why that's the case. And we missed that shot. That sucks. It sucks mostly because that means that's a electrical bolt that I used that missed. We only have 16 of those left. I don't know why I'm crawling around these vents. Isn't there a mine? Yep, right there. Okay, let's go get some mines. Man, look at all the ones we have. We'll be able to really do good, decent damage against the mutants when we're set for that. With that mine retrieved... Oh. I'll be super lazy. We'll open the door rather than go through the vents. Those poison traps were well placed. No, it, yeah, doesn't look like I'm going to need to wear the motion tracking goggles for the rest of Deep Away at this rate. Potentially, if I want the mines that are out near the Pip Boy, I might need to wear the goggles to find those a little faster. Okay, we've got more bots to deal with. I'd like to ambush them if we could. This will do. Let's try this. We should get three bots here. Nice. Oh, it is and isn't considered in ambush range because of the flickering of the torch. So we got to get lucky in that it will count for an ambush when we shoot at it. Woo! That was pretty sweet. I forgot that there's a little bit of AoE on the electrical bolts. I was expecting to get another. Guess bots don't care about sound. Not having any way to detect audio, I suppose, goes into that. Okay, so let's get this bot's attention. There's two bots. All right, we're going around the corner. Yes. 
They're both there. I know they're both there. Let's run over here. And I'm guessing they'll move up to about this spot to fire at me. So... You know, let's not use a flare quite yet. Let's wait and see what they do. Okay, they're going to fire from all the way down there. So let's go ahead and illuminate them. And this bot qualifies for ambush. Or can, depending upon when we actually take the shot. Ambush, I believe. Uh, actually, we'll read it together. Ambush. Uh, when attacking an illuminated target from out of the darkness with a single target ranged weapon, you ignore half the target's evasion, and your critical chance is increased by 20%, plus 0.3 for each stealth skill point. So, four points of stealth, you can probably round down, is 1% extra chance to crit. Our stealth is... Where's our stealth? 129... So that's going to add an extra 10% chance to crit. I guess a target in, uh, that we qualify for. Bots don't have evasion to my knowledge. So this is just the penalty we have here is because of the distance to the target. This might be a mistake because the bot will now use a grenade at us. I can't believe we don't qualify for ambush against this. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where I don't understand how ambush works sometimes. It feels like we should be benefiting from it, that that's still within the illuminated area. But it doesn't. In fact, our percentage is changing because it is illuminated, and we are we should still be also in the darkness. So, it's just a little fickle. Okay, now for the tricky part. How on earth do we deal with this with Garrett? I think I think we throw the EMP and race for the boxes? I think we have to do that. So here we go. So we run up here, equip and throw the EMP grenade, and then run for the boxes. Okay. And for the rest of this, we have to rely on an 84% chance to hit. And we have to hit it... ...close to 20 times? To kill it. Destroy it. Actually, I... I brought these with me for specifically this reason. Can we potentially ambush these? No. Yes, but only that one. It would be nice if one of those could crit game. Just just suggesting it. I'm only be quoting this to show people how effective ambush is, which is probably a skill not many people decide to take because of how fickle it is. There we go. That's a lot more like it. Oh! 
Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> I did not think it, it had recovered. Okay, well, guess what? We get to do this again then. User error. User error. Oh, okay, well, now I'm dead. Uh, so I, tr I try to get away. Okay, well, we didn't die, but now we have to do this again. That's a really awkward and expensive EMP grenade to miss. Let's wait till it's off cooldown and we'll do this again. Okay, charge up. Also didn't quite land where I wanted, but it's good enough. You have to run after you take two shots here. But I'm going to go ahead and illuminate them. Yeah, the ambush is nice when it lets me crit. The flares don't last as long as I would like them to last. I don't understand why this one wasn't considered to be ambush potential as well. We know we're in the darkness because we qualify for this one. And we knew that this was within the light and they're both with an equal distance away from the torch. This is me moving my complaining to missing high chances to hit frequently to instead complaining about what the game considers to be ambush qualifying. There we go. Okay. And we know there's a mine right here. Oh, which apparently I... Oh, did we... Maybe we detonated already? I didn't think we did. Maybe we did when the EMP mine went off? I didn't think we did, though. But I wasn't paying attention. Which is a great way for your- There it is! Okay, which, which is a great way for you to die to mines when you don't pay attention to where they could potentially be and or step on where they actually are because you were impatient. Won't say no to a burrower trap. Hey, a shotgun! Oh nice, we get an EMP grenade as well. Look at that experience points, guys. Look at this. We're already almost halfway up another level. Oh, wait. What was the level of this? Ours is equal to that. How's my crossbow holding up? Acceptable. We're going to have to leave and buy some repair kits, though, unfortunately. All right. Now we have another painful pros uh, thing here. We have another sentry gun over here, and we definitely... A sentry gun and a, and a turret, and we're going to want to destroy both of these. We also have a gun, uh, sorry, a bot as well. Let's move over here. Oh, crap. I accidentally did the door trick. Let's go get, there we go. That should get the bot's attention now. Darn you, moving just slightly outside of my ambush range. There we 
There we go. I was about to complain that my 70% chance to hit is a 50% chance to hit. But that's, that's, that's not so bad. I wonder if folks complain about 73% chances or like 67% chances missing often in this game. Because I, I expect a 70% to miss more like it, it shouldn't or rather it's not likely to. But I always expect, I don't rely on those. If I'm taking a 73 or 6, even a 67% chance to hit, I'm I'm saying, well, it'd be nice if this hit, but I won't expect it. If I miss five of those in a row, I'll be disappointed. But also, that's not unheard of. I wouldn't expect to hit one of those five in a row, even if it doesn't, uh... Oh, that's an awful chance to hit. Actually, if I... Hold on. I want to see something. If I move here and stand there and shoot that turret, does this turret see me and fire? Because I'd like to just stand here. Throw a flare here. Ooh, that turret is stronger. But we can probably take those hits. I don't want to use the shield. We shouldn't need it against this. Actually, you know what? That's a dumb thing to say. Use the shield. Now, we know there's a mine right there. And I can't get around it. So, we're going to go ahead and detonate it. Yeah, it's That's dumb, Tim. You should always use the shield. It's more efficient to use the shield. Your armor takes damage and durability loss upon taking taking hits. There we go. Okay, so now we can race across that. Remember, every single auto turret's got to be killed. They're just it's just too much experience points to pass on it. I mean, it's not not really. We could just not kill them, but I'm also going to accidentally walk into one of them. And this is going to be a little more painful than normal because I can't use... I can't use a flare here to help me because we're illuminated from shooting from here. You know, we could try... Hold on. We could try this. We could try shooting from here at a long distance shot. As long as this is illuminated, the crit might make up for the fact we're taking so many shots. Well, that wasn't at all where I wanted that. 80% chance to hit here does it directly at my feet. What the heck, Garrett? That's a lot more like it. Oh, no. That was not worth it. The chance to hit is abysmal. I'm not taking 45% chances to hit, even with an increased crit chance. No, we'll have to do it the, the, hard, the hard way, rather the long way. We are slowly whittling it down. Then when this room is complete, we'll go ahead and head back to Junkyard so I can get my crossbow repaired. You know, I'm I'm hitting the A2% chances about what I would expect. But I'm getting the chance to crit far less than I would expect.
didn't crit it once. And our weapon is now severely degraded. Yep, okay, so we gotta leave to repair our equipment. That gives us an excuse to stop by the, the one barrel and drop all the loot we've been collecting in it as well, so we'll do that. And we've got the key card, so while we're walking through that area, we'll go ahead and use the computer terminal there. I can't remember if there's anything that actually interacts with that terminal. But I don't think there is now that I think about it, but we're here. We'll go ahead and quickly check it. And we can pretend that I forgot all about the crawler, because I don't normally kill it. So we'll do, we'll, we'll do that too. That sounds good. No, we'll, we'll try fighting it. Oh, man. Oh. It'll be worth good experience points. Okay, yeah, there's nothing we can do with that. It'll be worth good experience points. Oh. Around this level, it'll be worth like 420 or so, I think. So it's worth killing it. We've died once so far because of my stupidity. Arguably, this is a stupid thing to do, too. Because if we don't have to fight a crawler, we shouldn't. But now that I know it's here, and since Garrett can access the vent systems to reach it, we should kill it. As a test of his ability to do exactly this. Oh, I was wearing tracking goggles that entire time. Okay, so... Do I have any loot on me? I do. I can sell all loot later. Actually, we'll be selling a little bit of loot now. If the weapons merchant has recycled his inventory. Don't tell anyone I'm leaving the gates open. <laughs> we'll, sh we'll shut the doors to make up for it. Alright, so... I think the weapons merchant is the best person to go to. We also don't need this one singular HE grenade any longer, and we shouldn't need M. Oh, we might want these. We do have more turrets, so I guess we'll keep them. Actually, we're going to deal with the crawler next. Oh, man. Try that. Len, did you cycle your inventory since we were here? You did. Two firearms, one tactical vest. Two firearms, one tactical vest. Okay, and I want this. I'm going to want five of these at least. Let's take two more. Okay, let's repair our crossbow. Our dagger could use a single repair as well. Okay, acceptable. As long as we're checking, Kendrick also replenished his inventory. We'll take some more shock bolts, look up what we used. this. Alright, let's try the crawler next. Oh. <laughs> What's the best armor to wear? I guess we'll go and just fetch our acid armor now. God, it's, I think it's right near the path down. So if you know it's there, you can walk down 
and throw a flare. Uh, walk down while stealthed. Get it revealed very quickly. And then try a shock bolt. If that doesn't work, net it. And if that fails, we're doomed. <laughs> Do we have any other nets? Oh, we have more nets. Okay, we'll bring more nets with us. We'll come back to that. We're going to do a bit of door opening now. So half of DPOA is cleared. We've got the mutant infested areas left. Two more turrets. So that will bring us to halfway to level up as well. I think we'll hit level 12. I think we'll hit level 12 while we're in here. Uh, we gotta go down this way, Tim. We're doing the crawler next. I could have probably hit level 12 if I had done the Black Eels quest as well. Tagging enemies and then letting the Protectorate deal with them would have worked. I don't think we would have been able to side with Southgate Station. They likely wouldn't have gotten involved. It's this way. I wish I, I wish I could just forget that it's here and pretend I don't know the direction, but I know it's here. All right, let's try this. Okay. And stop. Okay, so it's right here someplace, I think. It's not. Oh, crap. It wasn't right there. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> we did reveal it, but it was in the corner. Can we potentially get a net on it? Oh, look at that chance to hit. Let's try. No. No, we don't. Unfortunately, our net's on cooldown now, too. So, this is really bad. And we're going to be exhausted. I think... So, now I, I just want to reload the game to make another attempt at this. Because this, this is really, really bad for us. I think it's here. But there's nothing I can do. Now we're tired. It wasn't there. Well, I, I guess we'll go get our net back. It's here. I think. That's its shadow? Yep, that was it. Oh, it's sticking around. Okay, we'll try to net again. Evaded. We'll try shooting it. We hit it. We hit ourselves. Unfortunately, that doesn't doesn't help us at all. Didn't even set it on fire. Man, it's resisting everything. Well, actually, it didn't resist the stun. It's resisting more than I would like it to resist. That chance to hit, that's awful. But you know what? We're going to take it. If we can... St can it be stunned? It can't be stunned. We will just run. I don't think it can reach me this round. And we'll set a flare here. It can reach me that round. Good God, the movement. I think it's around this corner. It's not. It's around this corner. It is. Hello. Man, this... How am I dealing with a crawler? How? This is awful.
I don't see it. Is it over here? No. Well, it knows where I am. Did it really go away? I hate crawlers. Oh, actually, that's not true. I love them. I love fighting them. They're such a, a unique enemy for this game. It requires a completely different way of thinking about how to how to do one of these battles. But I, I don't want to fight this at this level. Our chance to hit is just awful. And we don't have a good chance to net it either. So I think if we can't kill it with this venture, I'm just going to reload and we're going to skip it. I, I feel like this is a gigantic mistake to fight this thing. You know, it's going to hit us every time anyway, so let's put on our detection goggles. While we look for it. Did it run away? Stop! Okay. We saw it before, just barely before it saw us. Unfortunately, my chance to hit against this is awful. So... Do I take two 54% chance to hit it with a shock bolt, or do I illuminate it? Actually, I don't, I don't unless we, unless this will qualify for ambush, we're, we're, not, and I don't think it's gonna, we're not gonna have a greater chance to hit. So let's go ahead and just try shocking it. We did hit it, we're gonna adrenaline, and then we're gonna throw a net on it, because this is the best chance we have of actually getting this to stick. Now, we're only going to have one round of it netted. I think we move over here. And we'll throw a, a f Molotov on top of it. Good. It's on fire. And then we can shoot it twice and kill it. Good. Hey. Holy crap. We did it. <laughs> oh, God. That was painful. Okay, but we did it. 510 experience points for it, too. So that was worth it. So this is another argument to be made as to why you should play classic mode. Because if this doesn't have a crawler eye on it, this was absolutely not worth the attempt. If it does have a crawler eye, uh, it was probably worth doing for your second crawler eye. Nope. Nope. You would have done all that work, used all those items for a crawler tail. And Garrett's not even taking any biology. And it's not worth very much, so that's just useless. Okay, good. We did it. And don't have to do that again for another... Ever. <laughs> I'm never doing that again. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, that's interesting! I think this vent is always unlocked or open, so they give you a way. I don't think I, I don't think I open that one. So the game gives you a way to access that cave system if you don't have the strength to use a crowbar and don't have lock picking to open the vents. Okay. Okay. So crawler dealt with. Now we've got more dogs to deal with. I tend to like doing this area through this passage and fending off the dogs. Oh. Fending off the dogs in uh, from the one room that has a computer console in it. So we're going to do that again. But let's now prepare for the acid areas. So we don't need acid bolts. Those won't be useful to us. I want all my Molotovs. I'm going to want the uh, 
Where are these? Caltrops. We'll want the mutated dog leather now. And we won't need this. I'll take my MK3 grenade. There's nothing else there I need. We don't need EMPs with me. We hold on to all the keys until we're done. Okay, let's go. Let's go! So, took a bit of time, but it was totally doable to destroy those turrets with Garrett. We're going to want to collect all these mines and start using them liberally, since we're going to have so many mines to utilize to make this fight against the dogs a little easier. My plan will be to trap the area outside here and inside, and we'll do what we did last time with the door after we destroy the auto turret in the one side room. The dogs, I don't think, know these mines even exist, so we could have left these here, but I don't want to be in this area fighting the dogs because I don't want these activating and killing me when a single dog runs over one or two of them and sets them all off. I didn't search that barrel. Barrel can wait there until we're done. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Oh, so zoomed in. Okay, so... Lead stealth. Enter combat. This is a bit risky. But I'm gonna hope there's no dogs. Good. In that area. There's a mine in this room. MK1. Let's go and get it. And then... Then we should trap the area. Since we have some of these MK1 mines, we'll use these to start. They'll make a lot of noise if they get set off. Which will drag all the other dogs into this area. I think when we start fighting the bot, we'll make enough noise that the dogs will come to investigate. If they don't, we'll just throw a grenade or something to get their attention. You need a 10 perception to see the secret door, so we're not going out the back. Okay, now there is a bot here, so... That's good. Oh, I'm out of normal bolts. I still you still have no normal bolts, Tim. Okay, and I don't hear any mines being activated. Not mine nor the haha <laughs> nor the other mine in the center of that gun held area. Oh, why'd I put the EMPs back? Could have used them for this area. Okay. We don't need them though. I probably don't need that equipped. Lots of goggle frames today. Okay. All of the doors are unlocked. Next. I want to get the dog's attention. I'm 
be going all in on this, aren't you, Tim? Let's put another mine here. Actually, let's put a trap here first. And then we put a frag mine here. And then we want to get their attention. I don't think we'll need more caltrops down here. Okay. Let's do this. Alright, that should get their attention. Should. If it doesn't, that's super awkward. <laughs> Can we maybe get dog... There, there we go. Can we get a dog to see us? Because that will also drag all the dogs to us. Uh, in case you don't know, dogs work on like a hive mind principle. I think when one sees you, they, they all see you. And now they're definitely on the way. But as much as I want to watch all the dogs die, I don't want to take a frag, MK2 frag hit. That was the, a the MK1HE. All the dogs are now running across the Caltrops to get to this room that we're in. Well, that's cool. They're all just mosing about, getting themselves... Wow. That's all from different dogs, I think, right there. So that tells us there's six dogs left. No, no, no. Okay. They're walking just beyond the mines. Let's do that. There we go. That's a lot more like it. I think that was three of them that died. Now one's hit the trap. The dog is considered illuminated and we are not. Oh, I thought there was only... Oh, one dog left in the mine. There's two others. Oh, right. Then we still have no arrows. That's a bit awkward. Okay, not bad, huh? All dogs dealt with. Of course, it is very handy that I I know about this particular room to fight them in. But you could do the fight quite differently if you wanted to. Going up through this way and using the multiple rooms and locking, door, locking dogs in certain rooms and so on to deal with them. You might have a bit more room to move around as well. But as long as we're using, especially because we're using traps, I don't, I can't think of a reason why we wouldn't want to drag the dogs over the traps and let the traps do most of the work. Looks like they took almost every single cow trap off the ground as well. So that was a very effective clearing of this room. Although we're not quite done. Oh. I think I have enough of these arrows to destroy the turrets. I think what we're going to do this time is that I think we can agree that I can kill these two turrets without any significant issues. So I'll come back and kill them off screen because I'll, I'll want to go and pick up more standard bolts to do that. And in the meantime, once this acid is gone, we'll try clearing out the other two rooms left in Depot A. I'm assuming that was indeed all the dogs. I can't imagine there being any left at this point. No, there is not. Okay. And I'll pick up what's the remains as well. Garrett will eventually have some chemistry because I'm intending on taking elemental bolts.
which means that Garrett will be crafting MK3 fires and acid bolts, which I believe benefit from it. Okay, time for the big mutant area. I like doing it in the one room with the warehouse uh, boxes in it, coming up from below. But we're going to do something a little tricky this time. We're going to preemptively assume that we're going to have to zone. And so, on that note, we'll set up... <gasps> the two-headed mutant is here! Okay, well, it's a shame, because we're not playing Oddity, which is probably why he spawned. Oh, uh, crap, I didn't mean to loot that. Well, I did, but I didn't want... We shouldn't have. All right, so let's... Oh. I wanted to trap this area. At least get, like, two or three traps down. In preparation for us having to zone through this room. Would be nice to have these down here to start with, but we'll do the battle from a different direction. If we do end up zoning. We'll try putting it over here, and then we'll zone. Caltrops could also be useful. But I don't know how I put them down without being seen, so we're going to leave. That's something else that's a bit odd, even after all these years I've played under rail, is I don't understand why you have to make yourself visible when you throw grenades, or when you shoot a crossbow, or use a silenced weapon. Why do you suddenly lose your stealth? Or, I suppose at the very least, why how, why do Caltrops trigger it? It's just odd. Okay, so next... We'll climb the ladder... And go up... Through the area with the two sentry guns... And trap the other entrance from that side, too. Then we'll come up... Oh... You should start... from the other side. Or rather, trap the other side, and then enter through that that passage because I don't think we can climb down a ladder when combat after combat has started unless it works the same way as vents which is something else by the way I only recently discovered even after 1000 something hours in underrail I always assumed that you were never allowed to enter vents after uh, once combat starts because the game tells you cannot interact with this object during combat. But that's not true. You can. You can, uh... go through vents in combat. You just have to be right up against the vent. Then it takes like 15 action points to do so. But if you don't start right out, right below the vent, you won't. Someone hit a frag grenade. Because suddenly there's a bunch of techs over here. And someone hit one of my other traps. Because I see bio damage being taken. The good news is the sound of the mine going off should have attracted everything over to that area. 
Anyway, let me let me show really quick what I mean by combat. So if I was in combat and I started, let's say here, and I wanted to get away, I would normally run to the vent and try clicking on it. But it would tell me, I hey, you can't do that. You're in combat. If I'm being chased by enemies. But if you start directly below the vent, like I am right now, and start your turn there, you can climb through the vent. That seems to be rather consistent when I was trying it out earlier. Because I was attempting to run from strongmen and handmaidens out in the DLC with Sly. Because I was having a really hard time fighting them. And it seemed to work every time I tried it. Even, even if they were aware of where I was located. What are you doing here? Oh, I want this ladder. And we know there's some hostiles here. We should have the key card to this. There should be no hostiles around here anymore. They've probably all gone to investigate this, the noise. There'll be a mutant on patrol who will walk over this trap, so I want this here. Let's see. didn't walk over the trap. He just barely missed it, in fact. I don't think he noticed it. I think that was part of his normal patrol. I think. But we'll still leave it there. A dog could hit it. That will get all of the creature's attention up here now. This is a giant mistake. But we're going to start combat here. Like them all on fire, so they qualify as being illuminated. And then we can start killing them. Oh, I am too close to that frag mine. We'll need to take a step back. Actually, we, we should do that now. Wow, and the dog just vanished. <laughs> Alright, so that's this mutant. Does not die. From those next turn. But will die from the poison the turn after. I think we'll be okay. It's a long... Oh, I say that's a long shot to pray for. But we'll take it. Ooh. I should have moved here. Okay, that's good. Nice, it crit. Unfortunately, it's still not dead, and it won't quite die. Let's try shooting the dog, and the AoE of this should hit the two-headed mutant. Still didn't kill it. Okay, let's start running for the hills. There's way too many enemies. Yeah, as you can see, all bunched up down there. I'm not very afraid of these acid blobs, because if one does land on us, the entanglement, we can still get away. I'm going to do something really stupid, and we're going to shoot again, and then move away toward, towards the exit. 
because they're all lined up in a row. So if I shoot this dog, we should hit all the other dogs with the fire shot and kill the two-headed mutant with the hit. And now we run. We could stay. We could stay and try not to zone. But we have that set up for exactly this reason. So I think we will I think we will zone. Oh, no! Don't walk in front of the auto turret, Tim! <laughs> Don't have a second stupid death. There's no reason to do that. Other than to prove everybody that you don't remember where things are or what state they're in half the time when you play this game. We'll go take at the amazing two-headed mutant uh, unique oddity uh, together when we go and investigate uh, his corpse. I have gotten to spawn over here on any... Well, no, we saw it on... Oh, we only saw it... I think we saw it on Alien, who isn't Oddy mode. But I didn't see it with Duke Nukem. <laughs> or with Lottery, who are who are on Oddy mode. And then we did see it again on Garrett here, who is not on Oddy mode. So doesn't it just figure that this is what the, how the game works? Doesn't it just figure? This is always the way it works. Always, with every game I play. Every single time. It's like you play Diablo 2. And you're like, I'm not going to play the Necromancer this time. And then you find an amazing, like, ring. Or uh, a charm that adds all, plus one to all of the Necromancer abilities. You're like, like come on, freaking you're kidding me. Well, that didn't go where I wanted it. So I'm kind of glad we threw that now. Remember that they should know where I am. So they are heading directly to me. A whole lot of something happened there. Dogs illuminated. Dog will die. Oh, oh I don't want it to run over the trap. I want that to hit someone else. We're just going to stand here and take the acid blob. I forgot I had a mine there. Hello, mutant. Hello, other mutant. So, we'll... Stun your friend? And then we'll kill you? <laughs> Ambush! I love this skill. It is so thematic to use it. It feels really good when you can take advantage of this. It also means that I'm carrying, like, oh, I went in here with 18 flares. Because it's so useful to illuminate your targets. And Molotov cocktails are also useful. As are incendiary bolts. Okay, so we didn't use this trap. So let's start taking back our traps. I think we've cleared this entire room. So we'll stealth and take a peek. Our food also expired, so we should eat something. Uh, we'll take a mushroom salad again. I can search the corpses with off screen. But we should stealth. I guess we'll search a two-headed mutant corpse together. Actually, we can search all of these. Oh, hold on. Is a bear. We definitely want the, all the traps back. Actually, we don't need to do this, I suppose. We have enough traps to clear the next room perfectly fine without any issues. I suppose I'll mention this as well. With Sylvester Boots and Garrett now, I have, I got Sly Boots to where he was located when the last video for him was recorded, which was the Mutant Mall, the uh, Mutant Mall, the Lunatic Mall. And now Garrett here, without using the cheat engine to refresh the merchant inventory. It's been a bit painful sometimes. Garrett's had to wait around at the bar for an hour. Uh, 
but it's easy enough for me to minimize this game while I do work, for example, which is what I've been doing. And it's, it, I like it, actually, because it's more, it lets me, it feels more atmospheric to not use the cheat engine to cycle the, car the merchant's inventory. But if I didn't have so much free time to just run this game while doing something else, I probably would still use it. Oh my god! It's worth 300 experience points, so this is a 4-point Adi item. The blind eye still twitches from time to time, oozing corrosive acid. Adi points, when converted to classic experience, are worth 75 for each point, generally, if they're not quest-related. So... That was... Yeah, four Adi experience points. Man, that's worth... That's worth trying to get. Oh, that sucks, because this means I have to come back to Deep Away with... With Lottery and, and Sly to get it. Oh, nice! Speaking of Adi points, we got a few more. And it was enough to level. Garrett's level 12, so it looks like we get to do the final area at level 12. Wow, I didn't get any acidic tongues or the like, I guess, off the dogs I killed over in the other area that we're finding we're getting all these points over here instead. Okay, so four points over my limit. Let's see. Okay, let's go back to the barrel and store some stuff. Actually, no, we should level. So there's as I mentioned before, there is never a reason to skip leveling when it becomes available to you. Always do it immediately. During combat, you will benefit from the extra stats. You could benefit from an extra feat. You could extra benefit from the extra skill points. Always level the moment it pops up. It's not like you get a full hit point restore by waiting. Nothing of that sort occurs. This goes into perception. And for skills... Throwing's where I want it. Dodge is where I want it. Evasion gets leveled. Stealth gets leveled. These go to 60. Oh, I'm not putting any points into mechanics at all this level. Okay. And what do I take for a feat? Quick pockets. Is on my build. Yeah, that makes sense. We're throwing grenades, we're using many different types of bolts, having an extra slot, especially because I'm going to lose a slot when I finally find a archery belt or a quiver, whatever it's called. This will make up for it, so quick pockets it is. Do you guys know how to fill this last spot, by the way? I don't know where the sixth utility slot comes from. And I've played this game for over 1,800 hours now. <laughs> if you know where that spot comes from, could you tell me where it is, what feat I have to take to get it, or what belt or perk or piece of gear gives me it? Because I'm not, I have no clue where it comes from. We'll also take a look at when we go to the barrel at what the weapon was that was on the dead girl. It looked like an assault rifle, I think. I think it's what we got. We'll take a look to see how good of an assault rifle it was. Okay, so... She, she was wearing this, and it was a 7.62 Marauder. Uh, nothing else special about this weapon, other than it's a level 10 Marauder. I guess it's okay, if you're not crafting, to have found this. But I wouldn't have mind seeing some special attachment to it, like a scope... Or a bi- I, I don't know if bipods can go on marauders, but something of that sort would have been handy. Don't need any of this crap. And by now, this probably has to be repaired. Yep. Our dagger does not. By the way, is another tip just in case this is the first one of these you guys have seen. Uh, don't carry around a ton of crap with you that you're never going to use. 
I've seen many people walk around with like 80 health hypos <laughs> and a bunch of garbage on their character from looting. Uh, you're never going to need 80 health hypos. You, uh, even in the deep caverns, you only probably need a handful of them when you're out exploring. Leave them in a place so you can go and resupply on occasion. But you don't, you don't want to walk around overburdened with a bunch of loot. Like, we don't, pro we probably don't need all of these mines, either. I could probably make do with half of what I've actually acquired. Especially because we're about to grab more mines now. Oh, nice! And I, I just saw that one instantly. But since we're in this area, we will put on the detection goggles. We want them from this area, and I think there's four mines in the area. If I recall correctly, there might be more on this side of the gate, but I don't think there is. No reason not to take them on classic mode. We get experience points for disarming. Not that we really need it. Um, on classic mode, I've discovered that... Well, this has been the case actually for, for decades. You can skip a great deal of things that reward you with experience on Classic and still end up at max level at the end of the game or level 29, one level away. We could leave all these mines just lying lying there without a concern and been absolutely fine, for example. Though it is rather hard to give up all the mines and traps that the Rat Hound King has scattered around his domain. If nothing else, because I'll put them to good use. I guess we are going to check really quick to make sure there's no mines over here. There could be. I can't re- Oh, there are! Okay, well, we want those as well. We're hearing the dog on the other side of this door from- Oh, this guy's name is Watt, isn't it, I think? Watt Pear? Okay, and I think that's the last of them. Alright, so... We'll do the battle from here. So the first thing I'm going to want to do... Is trap here. Actually, that's a mistake. It should be one of these traps here. I don't think the mute will come too close to us. I think we're fine here, but the dog I have to worry about. Oh, okay. Well, so much for that idea. He walked right over that trap, which means that now everyone's over there. Okay, then let's let's set up this area first. So Here. A bear trap here. Because we're going to race around this side to get on that side. It's going to be a bit of an awkward run. But we're still going to make the attempt to do it this way. Let's see. We'll take one shot and then we'll run over in this area. And we'll do the fight from this open area. Okay, we'll put one more frag mine here. Outside the AoE of the other one, because I don't want them both activating each other. We should hope, hopefully be around the, here by the time these mines are being detonated. And we'll put one more mine down here. And then I'm going to want one more bear trap placed down, and then I think we're good to start. Let's see. 
go here. Okay, that will do. My little minefield is set. I feel like the Rat Hound King. We'll put a bow. Um, oh. <laughs> put a mine here. And then we'll step aside. Okay. Maybe one more bear trap. I think, well, one more HE trap. This is going to be really tricky. We have caltrops. I guess I could throw caltrops too. But I. Sure, we'll throw caltrops. Hopefully they land here. Good. That's a deterrent to keep them out of this area. Even though we've trapped it, I still want the AI preferring the other direction. Okay, let's do this. Good. That buys us a round to run. All the other enemies are now stacking up behind the dog. And we run for it. So far, so good. I am... So now, I want them walking over the caltrops. So we'll set this area on fire. Which should keep them away. Kill that one and move over here. So far, so good. We can illuminate this area? Potentially. They might see the trap, but I don't think they will. Oh, I can't see them from here. Okay, that's a bit awkward. Bam! Okay, he doesn't want to walk in the fire, which is, you know, understandable. Will you walk in that trap for me? This one. Maybe. Maybe. You will if I move over here. You might do it anyway. Let's wait and see. <sighs> Gentlemen, that is good trap placement. Don't need a wall. Just need to know where they're going to go. <clears throat> Including me. <laughs> Including me. You didn't think I, I was immune to my own statements there. Oh, what an embarrassing way to end the level. Well, at least I didn't die from that being a frag mine. If I ever get around to making a tutorial, I'll have to remember to add that to traps. That you can force yourself to walk on them if you're not careful about where you click. By the way, I showed this a long time ago. We're talking a long time ago. But I still have all these tutorial games saved out here. From 2019, when I had meant to do a tutorial all those years ago, but never got around to it. Eventually, I'll do it. Some some decade in the future. I'll be very surprised if there's anything left. We heard, I think, all the dogs die. There were two mutants that died, and I don't think there's a third over here in hard mode. But we'll, we should stealth as we investigate this. Yeah! Yeah! All right! Everyone... That is the end of Depot A. We have killed all the enemies. We've explored all the areas. We got the rotator circuit drill board as well. 
It is done. Garrett only died once to my own stupidity about assuming that the auto turret was still on shutdown mode. Nice. Hopefully this also shows the usefulness of traps. Man, they are so, so useful to place in the right places. Yep, there's nothing you can't overcome in Underrail with liberal use of bear traps and cow traps. But I like showing off, so I like make, I like not making walls with them, but instead placing them where I know the enemy is going to be walking in, depending upon how I've encouraged it to move around the battlefield. But I'm beginning the babble. This was entertaining for me. Hope it was entertaining for you. And I will maybe see you in another one of these, if I record one of these in the future. Take care, everyone. And thanks again for watching.